any location is the capacity. The average capacity along rural California freeways on weekends and holidays where the average trip is approximately 50 miles or more and where there are no sustained grades is about 1,500 vehicles per hour per lane. Typical capacities along urban California freeways where there are not many trucks, no sustained grades, and no unusual ramp patterns are about 1,900 to 2,100 vehicles per hour per lane during commute peak periods. Capacities are more at some locations. However, 1,900 to 2,100 vehicles per hour per lane are typical values. A value of 1,800 vehicles per hour per lane is often used for design at large urban areas. The rates at specific lanes usually vary when the total volumes are at capacity. Rates are usually most at the lane nearest the median and least at the outer lane. However, on-ramps, off-ramps, and transitions to fewer lanes can cause the rates at the outer lane to increase. This is the connector from eastbound Route 10 to northbound Route 110 at Los Angeles. When the demand for one or more lanes exceeds the capacity of the lane or lanes, congestion occurs. Congestion along freeways is always caused by more vehicles arriving at an area than can leave the area. The delay at most congested locations along urban California freeways is usually less than a minute to about 15 minutes. Delays of as much as half an hour can occur at some urban locations. Extreme delays of an hour or more can occur at some rural areas on weekends and holidays and at any area when there is a major incident. Typical congested areas include a shock wave where vehicles must rapidly decelerate, an area of slow and go or stop and go traffic, and an area where speeds increase. Most congestion along connectors is caused by traffic demand exceeding the capacity of the connector or by traffic demand exceeding the capacity beyond the connector. This is southbound Route 405 at Los Angeles, south of Route 101 during a morning peak period. There are five southbound lanes prior to the off-ramp and a transition to four southbound lanes beyond the off-ramp. There was a shock wave near the interchange structure. The southbound rate beyond the off-ramp was slightly more than 7,000 vehicles per hour. Speeds were slow. The northbound rate at the interchange structure was also slightly more than 7,000 vehicles per hour. Speeds were fast. The rates at the interchange were less than the rates north and south of the interchange. The speeds of southbound vehicles were slow because traffic demand exceeded capacity further south and congestion occurred. Congestion routinely occurs here during morning peak periods. Peak periods at many towns last much less than an hour. Peak periods in the Los Angeles area last about three to four hours. Peak 15-minute rates should usually be used for the design of freeways at towns and urban areas where volumes would vary significantly during a peak hour. Hourly volumes should usually be used for freeway design at areas such as Los Angeles where volumes would not vary much during peak hours. There is a sustained southbound upgrade prior to this interchange. Sustained grades can reduce the capacity of a freeway. One truck is equal to about two cars along freeways on level terrain and is equal to several cars on sustained upgrades. This is eastbound Route 101 at Calabasas in Los Angeles County during a morning peak period. The rates here during this scene were about 7,300 vehicles per hour eastbound and 3,000 vehicles per hour westbound. 
There is a transition from four lanes to three lanes beyond the on-ramp. The capacity of the three lanes is approximately 6,000 vehicles per hour. The traffic rates along the four lanes and the on-ramp routinely exceed the capacity of the three lanes during morning peak periods, and congestion occurs along the four lanes. Vehicles along the three lanes usually are not delayed much. Most of the congestion is along the four lanes. Widening the four lanes to five lanes would not reduce the delay. If the three lanes were widened to four lanes, there would be no congestion here. However, this would cause increased congestion at another area several miles to the east. Congestion often occurs where the number of through lanes do not change. This is usually because the rates along the through lanes plus the rate at an on-ramp exceed the capacity of the freeway beyond the on-ramp. The capacity of the three lanes just beyond the congested area can be calculated by counting vehicles at the three lanes when there is congestion along the four lanes and averaging the rates. Ramp volumes could also be counted. Data would not be obtained if there were any incidents. The delay at various times could be obtained by driving from a prior interchange to the interchange beyond the transition to three lanes. This data could be used to calculate the demand rates and also the total delay. This is eastbound Route 101 at Calabasas, more than a mile before the transition from four lanes to three lanes during the same peak period. Vehicles were decelerating because of a shock wave. However, there was not much delay. A shock wave then occurred at the left two lanes. This was the beginning of the significant congestion. Speeds of vehicles were still faster at the right lanes than at the left lanes. However, at the transition from four lanes to three lanes, speeds during peak periods would usually be faster at the left lanes. Some vehicles at the left lane were stopped This is where the merge of the on-ramp is located. If vehicles were counted here and also at the three lanes beyond the transition for an entire peak period, the volume would be approximately the same. However, volumes during specific intervals, such as 15 minutes, would often be very different because of the congestion between the merge and the three lanes. It is important that vehicle counts for calculating capacities be obtained beyond the congested area where speeds are about 35 miles per hour or faster. This is the transition from four lanes to three lanes. Speeds were increasing. 
This three-lane area is where capacity rates occur. This is the same area. There was no congestion. The rate was approximately 5,800 vehicles per hour. This was an average of slightly more than 1,900 vehicles per hour per lane. Volumes were less than capacity. Problems can also occur at weaving areas and near ramps. The design of such areas is very important. Freeway weaving areas should usually be a minimum of 1,600 feet plus 1,000 feet for each additional required lane change. This weaving distance along northbound Route 101 at Los Angeles is about 400 feet. There is a preceding slip ramp from the freeway and there are two auxiliary lanes. The connector is to Route 110. This is northbound Route 110 in Los Angeles at the connector from Route 10. The weaving distance is about 1,250 feet. There are two auxiliary lanes. Weaving areas should be designed so that volume will be much less than capacities, especially at freeway to freeway interchanges. However, this is not always practical. It is very important that the traffic demands at the right lanes not exceed the capacities at the right lanes. This is the connector from Route 101 to southbound Route 110 at Los Angeles. There is a weaving area beyond the merge. Traffic operational problems can occur at weaving areas even when volumes are less than capacities. Congestion will occur at one or more lanes when traffic demands exceed capacities. This is southbound Route 110 in Los Angeles. There was congestion at the right lane because the demand rates at the right lane for through vehicles, vehicles from preceding on-ramps, vehicles from this on-ramp, vehicles from the freeway to the off-ramp, and vehicles from the freeway to the next connector, exceeded the capacity of the right through lane at the weaving area. There is an auxiliary lane here. Weaving areas at large urban areas and at some towns and rural locations should be designed for approximately the most vehicles that can probably get to the weaving areas. This is northbound Route 101 at Los Angeles. There was congestion at the right lanes because the demand rates for through vehicles at the right through lane, vehicles from prior on-ramps, vehicles from the connector, and vehicles from the freeway to the next off-ramp exceeded the capacity of the right lanes. This type of congestion can occur at on-ramps, off-ramps, and connectors, even if there are no other ramps or connectors near the area. The possibility that congestion at the right lanes will occur would usually be decreased if the number of ramps were increased. This is northbound Route 110 at Los Angeles. Congestion can also occur because of incidents, construction, and maintenance. Capacities can be reduced slightly even if no lanes are closed. When one or more lanes are closed for construction or maintenance, typical capacities at the other lanes average about 1,000 vehicles per hour to 1,600 vehicles per hour. The capacities vary depending on the type of work and would usually be less at rural areas than at urban areas. This is westbound Route 118 in Los Angeles County. In summary, freeway congestion may be caused by the demand exceeding the capacity at all through lanes, at right lanes near weaving areas and near ramps, at incidents, and at construction and maintenance areas. 
Freeway congestion can also be caused by the demand exceeding the capacity of ramps and connectors and by signals and stop signs at the intersections of off-ramps with local streets and roads.